Okay, so we're going to talk about Wrigley's training so we can stay consistent at home. We're going to start with his commands. Heel means walk next to me on a loose leash on the left hand side. So it's really important that we keep the leash loose and not with tension because we're not able to communicate with him properly if there's constant tension on the leash. So it does have to have slack in it and it needs to be nice and loose. That's what heel means. Free means he can go sniff and explore. The leash can't get tight, but he doesn't have to stay right by your side. Heel means you're on the left hand side on a loose leash. Free means, okay, you can walk around and sniff um, and he can have that at certain times on your walk. Sit means sit and stay until you're told free or heel. So for example, when you're going through doors, like you're going from in your house to out on a walk, you'd have him sit, remind him sit as you open the door and then tell him heel to walk through the doorway together so he doesn't just bolt through the door. Down means lay down and stay. So you tell him down, he needs to stay until he's told free. We don't free from a distance. So if I put him in a down over here and I go over here, he needs to stay in the down. I go back to him and tell him free when it's time for him to get up from the down stay. Same thing with place. Place is a boundary stay on his bed. So when company comes over or when you're eating and you don't want him begging, or if he's just getting a little restless in the house and needs something to do, we put him on place. That way, if he's like barking at us and he's bored and he wants a job to do, let's Let's go to place you can get rewards for being quiet on place again we don't free from a distance that way he knows to stay on until we go up to him good place then tell him free and you'll see that in the video and of course the rules of place no barking while on place no getting off of the bed until you're told free or until he's told free and then um no chewing on the bed. He can't have a toy if you're going to have him on place for a long period of time. And then come when called. That means come from point A to point B. It doesn't mean come walk with me. That's heel. Come means you're over there and I want you over here. You're going to say come. Praise as he runs to you. Good boy. Take two steps back and you're going to keep your hand on your thigh. That way he has a target to look for so he doesn't get overly excited and jump up. We don't want to keep our treats up here because he's going to look for the treats and then jump up and get excited. So we keep our hand on our leg. That way he has a target to run towards. Have him sit. Reward. Then you can either remind him sit to stay or you can tell him free and we can go on. Leave it. Just don't get anything off of the floor. So if you drop something, tell him leave it and use a correction if needed if he's still going for that item. So with a correction, we're going to use the remote collar mostly. So for Wrigley, he needs to have some form of of collar on in the house at all times for the first few weeks that he's home. That way we can relay the boundaries in the home with the training. So we're going to go over a few features of the remote collar and then we're going to go over the remote collar more in depth at the end of the video. So to turn on the remote collar, this is how we're going to stay consistent with our commands. The collar itself has a little red dot up here. So that is the magnetic key that will turn on the remote. The matching magnetic key is on the remote itself and the matching one's on the collar. So if we look at the remote and we turn it to the side, we'll see a little red dot. It's not a big red button, it's a little red dot and we are going to touch the two together. So you're going to see me touch and you'll see a green light. That green light will flash every few seconds to let you know that the collar is on and charged. So it's just a quick touch. If you touch the two together and a red light appears, we've turned the collar off. So we wanna to touch the two red magnets together until we see a green light. It's just a quick tap. Now we know that the collar is on, charged, ready to go. To turn on the remote, it's the on off button on the back that has the letter L. We're gonna push and hold that until the collar lights up. So we're going to use this collar to stay consistent with Wrigley. He is at level 30 out of 100, so pretty average. And pretend my hand is Wrigley. So we went over all the commands. If he chooses not to do one of the commands, if that's his choice, then there are consequences for his actions. If he does the right thing, we're going to reward him with treats. If he doesn't, we're going to use a correction so we can stay consistent. So let's say, for example, you're having him heal and he starts to walk too fast and that's going to make the leash get tight. We're going to tell him no. Press the, I'm sorry, the black S button over here. The black S button. We're going to tell him no. Push that button and then tell him heal. So that gives me a little like tingle, but it's not, un it's not painful, it's just a little bit uncomfortable. So again, he's starting to walk too fast for us, which is gonna lead to a tight leash, which is what we want to avoid. We're gonna tell him no, give a correction, and remind him heal. So whenever we give a correction, we always follow through with the command that we want 
Wrigley to do. So if he's in the house, he should have this on. He can wear this 10 to 12 hours a day. So have this on him when you're home, even when you're not home, but during the day, definitely. So if he starts to vocalize or bark at us, we can tell him no, push the black ass button, and then tell him to go do something more productive. Go to place, lay down, and then when he does that for a certain period of time, uh, for a few minutes, he can get a reward because he's doing something more productive than barking. So that is how we're gonna follow through with our commands. So we have this quick snap, perfect. That's gonna fit nice and snug so the contact points make good connection with Wrigley's skin so we can follow through and stay consistent. So you're gonna focus on the black S button to follow through with all of your commands. To turn the collar off, we're gonna to touch the two together. You'll see the red light, that means it's off. Then to turn the remote off itself, we push the button in the back. and the screen is dark. I'm gonna go over the rest of the features at the end of the video, that way we don't go over too much too fast. So, I do wanna compare Wrigley's current collar to the collar that I think would work better for him. So, if we look at how many prongs are on this versus how many prongs are on this, this smaller collar is going to be more efficient for Wrigley. However, it is not as easy to put on him because this has the quick buckle this one has to be unhooked. So you can unhook it at any prong, but it's a little bit more difficult to put on and take off, but this is gonna be more effective for him, so I would recommend that. But again, the leash should never be constantly tight. It should be a pop and release, pop and release to communicate with him when he is not in the correct position. So no, pop and release, heel, no, pop and release, sit. Whatever it is, the leash should not be constantly tight. If it's constantly tight, he is not gonna understand what's right and what's wrong, and he's just gonna do whatever he wants anyway. So we have to make that line of communication very clear for him. So those are his commands. So now we are going to show you Wrigley's commands and actions. All you have to do is stay consistent and have fun.
Is that deer? Down, down, good boy. Down, down. Down. Thank you. Good down. Good down. Free. Good job.
face. So we're gonna go over all of the features of Wrigley's remote collar. So we're gonna turn it back on. Okay, so it is at level 30. This level could change while Wrigley's at home. It might either be too high or too low. We just want it just enough to stop unwanted behavior, but not enough to cause major discomfort. It just should be a little tap on the neck to discourage that unwanted behavior. So if we need to change the level, we first have to unlock it. So we're going to push and hold the dial right here. Now we can turn it down or turn it up to the desired level that we want for Wrigley. So we're going to turn it back to 30 and you lock it back in place. So you push down on the dial until the 1D is solid again and then we are good to go. So when the 1D is flashing it means that it is unlocked and you can turn the collar or you can turn the level up or down. So we know the black S button is for regular corrections. The red S button is the boost feature. So I have not needed this yet for Wrigley, but you might need it in the future. Let's say for some reason he gets away from you. Um, everything should be practiced on leash first for the first couple of weeks until you've been in that area before. And then you can work on off leash training. Remember to reward behaviors you like to increase the rate of those behaviors. So reward good things throughout the house also along with in training, reward good behaviors. And you this to correct unwanted behaviors. Anyway, the red button is for emergencies only, so it is actually going to boost Wrigley's level from 30 to 50. So it is going to increase it by 20. That should be a big enough jump to whatever he's doing. Let's say he's running towards something dangerous to kind of snap him back. So if you call him to come to you and he's not listening and you tried correcting him with the black S button and it didn't get his attention, just push the red S button until it gets his attention. Call him back to you. That way he doesn't put himself in a dangerous position. So it's red for emergencies only. Over here we have the T button. I don't really use this a whole lot in training. It's vibrate, but what I do like to do is go ahead and push it. That way I know I've turned the collar on before I put it on Wrigley. He can wear this collar 10 to 12 hours a day. It does have to come off at night or at some point. That way his uh, neck can get a break from it. This is waterproof. He can go swimming. He can get this wet and everything. But what you want to do is if um, there's moisture underneath the collar, you want to take the collar off. That way his skin can breathe. It is rechargeable. It only takes a couple hours to charge. Here's the charging port. So I wouldn't leave it on the charger all night uh, because then we'll run out the battery. The charging port over here on the remote. There's a charger in the box. I'll show you that here in just a second. This little M slash C button you really don't need to worry about. It changes the stimulation from momentary content to continuous. Basically momentary means if I push and hold the button it'll just stimulate for that quick second. Continuous means it'll stimulate the whole time and we don't need that for Wrigley. The on off button in the back is also a flashlight. So if we just tap it trying to turn off the remote we'll actually activate a flashlight feature on the collar. So tap it again, flashlight, tap it again, shuts the flashlight off. This is really useful at night. Um, the collar needs to fit high and snug on Wrigley. Anywhere under the chin, the underneath is a little bit more sensitive and high up on the neck. Uh, the prong collar can go above the remote collar. So if my watch is the remote collar and this is Wrigley's head, your prong collar can fit right here. So those are all the features of the remote collar. You're mostly going to use the black S button and the on off button, but those are all the other features in case you need them. I'm going to turn this off for a second. 
push and hold until the screen is blank. Inside this box, we have Wrigley's original strap. So if you don't want the bungee uh, quick snap, we have the original strap here. We have his charger that can charge both the uh, remote and the collar at the same time. Uh, these prongs should not come loose for any reason, but if they do, we have um, this tool right here to tighten them. You won't need to, but you have it just in case. Wrigley doesn't have long hair, so we don't really need these long extender prongs, but you have them just in case. Under here, we have the instruction manual, so if you want to go over all the buttons in greater detail, you're absolutely welcome to do that. But we did go over all the features that you will need. This does have a two-year warranty, but what you need to do, there we go, is send an email letting them know that you bought the collar. That way you can activate that warranty. Um, just to go over this again, I recommend getting the smaller prong collar versus the bigger. It's going to be more effective. Even though it's a little bit more difficult to put on, it's not too hard, but it is going to be more effective for Wrigley's training. Remember, keep that leash loose. Don't let constant tension in the leash because we're not going to be able to communicate with him. Clearly, we communicate through leash pressure. Leash pressure means he's doing something incorrect. Relaxed pressure with no, no tension on the leash means he's doing something right and we can give him treats. Don't be afraid to reward him for good things. The more we reward him, the more we're going to see him do good behaviors. And the more we correct unwanted behaviors, the less we're going to see those behaviors. So it's just important to stay consistent with Wrigley um, and utilize the commands throughout everyday life. Um, having a well-behaved dog is more of a lifestyle rather than doing exercises every day. So just sprinkle it in. When in doubt, use a leash and collar in the house for Wrigley. That way you can guide him to place if you need to or to lay down, whatever the case is, um, door manners, all that fun stuff. So again, good luck, have fun, and stay consistent.